Okay, so first let's write out all our givens. Mass 1 is 2 kilograms, mass 2 is 6, the big mass of the spinning wheel is 10 kilograms, and its radius is 0.25 meters, and the angle between them is 30 degrees. The coefficient of friction is 0.36, and since we know that this is a cylinder spinning on the axis going through the cylinder, the moment of inertia will have the coefficient of half, so it will be one half mr squared, and make sure to keep the correct variable names. Now I'm just going to draw another diagram here so we can show the forces. So here are the internal forces, which is force of tension 1 between the rope and the mass 1, and force of tension 2 between the rope and mass 2, and we can see that the acceleration will be in this direction, so we'll treat this as a linear system. And now the external forces, which is gravity on all three of the objects, and the normal forces, that is perpendicular to the surface that they're all standing on, and friction, because it's a rough surface, and the reactionary force for the actual pulley. So to solve this problem, we will break them up into three individual systems, including the individual masses and the pulley itself. And we're going to orient our axes like this. So because as you can see, the force vectors are perpendicular or parallel to these particular directions. And for the mass 2, we would only have to break down the gravity force, so it's easier to orient it this way. For the pulley, we will be adding up the torques that are acting on it, so as you can see, the forces that are at the circumference of the pulley are the same distance r away, so we will use capital R as our variable for those. So the vector for gravity is going straight down, and this was the vertical axis that we drew. As you can see, this angle is the same as the 30 degree angle theta right there, so we can break it down using opposite and adjacent sides. So since this one is adjacent to the angle, this one can just be force of gravity cosine of theta or m2g cosine of theta and then the opposite side would be sine so m2g sine of theta so we can simplify this even further to make the numbers easier to manage later on in the problem when it gets complicated we can write that sine of 30 equals 1 half and cosine of 30 equals root 3 over 2 so instead of writing this as m2g cosine theta or sine theta, we can just write it as m2g root 3 over 2, and then this one as m2g 1 half. Or, I forgot the g earlier, but we'll just write this for now and replace these. Now let's write our property. The sum of all torques equal uh, moment of inertia times angular acceleration. And since the acceleration is having that direction, using the right-hand rule, we can deduct that. All the torques acting will be negative, so it equals negative moment of inertia times angular acceleration. And then we sum it up, so torque from tension 1 minus torque from tension 2, since they're in opposite directions. Further expanding that using the definition of torque, we can write r times force of tension 1 times sine of 90 degrees minus r times force of tension 2 times sine of 90 degrees. We can get like terms by inserting the definition that angular acceleration equals acceleration divided by radius. So we can replace alpha with that, and that will give us a common r that we can later factor out. So first, let's get rid of these sine 90s. We know that's 1, and that's 1, so these just go away. So we can rewrite the old equation. Minus i over a over r equals r force of tension 1 minus r force of tension 2. And we can insert the definition of the moment of inertia of the cylinder by writing 1 half capital M capital R squared instead of i. So negative 1 half mr squared times a times r. One of the r's cancel out, so we're left with negative 1 half mr equals r force tension 1 minus r times force tension 2. In the end, all the r's canceled out, so the radius of the pulley did not matter in this problem at all. And we can rewrite our equation as negative 1 half m times acceleration equals force of tension 1 minus force of tension 2. But here's the problem. We have three variables that we do not know the definitions for. So to solve this further, we'll have to go back and solve for the individual systems of each of the masses in particular so we can extract a definition for force of tension 1 and 2 in terms of variables that we already know. So, just for simplicity, I'm going to label this as system 1, this as system 2, and this as 3. Now let's only focus on mass 1 by summing the forces in the x direction of our plane of choice, which equals mass 1 times acceleration of the whole system, which equals force of tension 1 minus force of friction, kinetic 1, which is in the opposite direction as the force of tension.
Now we sum up the forces in the y direction and write Newton's second law, which equals mass 1 times acceleration of the system equals force normal on object 1 minus force of gravity, which is mass 1 times gravity. And since we know that this object is not accelerating upwards or downwards, the acceleration has to be zero. So this center just gets canceled out, and we figure out that force normal equals mass 1 times gravity. Now, going back to the x direction, we can expand the force of kinetic friction as mu times force normal, and as we just figured out, that equals mu times mass 1 times gravity. And here, it equals mass 1 times acceleration, so we can isolate the definition for force of tension 1 by writing mass 1 times acceleration plus mu times mass 1 times gravity. Now we will do the same for mass 2, and as you can see, I've broken down the components for gravity here. So sum of forces in the x direction equal mass 2 times acceleration of the system, which equals, this time, since we have chosen a different plane, we will have different values. So 1 half mass 2 times gravity minus force of tension 2 minus force of kinetic friction, because they both are opposite in direction of the acceleration. And then for the y direction, we write the same definition as it equals force normal 2 minus mass 2 times gravity times root 3 over 2. Once again, it's not accelerating in our chosen y direction, so we can cancel out this part, and we're left with force normal equals root 3 over 2 times mass 2 times gravity. Now we go back to our x direction, and we simplify the same way we did with object 1, plugging in the definition of kinetic friction, just being mu kinetic times force normal, which we just solved, equals root 3 over 2 times m2 times g, so we'll rewrite the whole thing. 1 half mass 2 times gravity minus force of tension 2 minus mu times root 3 over 2 uh, times mass 2 times gravity. And this whole thing equals mass 2 times acceleration. So we can once again, we can once again subtract things around to isolate force of tension 2 in terms of our known variables, which is 1 half mass 2 times gravity minus root 3 over 2 times mu times mass 2 times gravity minus mass 2 times acceleration. Now that we have solved for force of tension 1 and 2, we can plug them into the equation we had solved earlier using the sum of torques. So now we have one, negative 1 half times mass of the pulley times acceleration equals mass 1 times acceleration plus mu times mass 1 times gravity minus this whole thing. So make sure to put parentheses because we will have to distribute the negative sign over to each of the individual terms later. This is one of the biggest mistakes people tend to make in this problem. So let's distribute our negative sign. Let's write everything out. Mass 1 times acceleration plus mu times mass 1 times gravity. Also, I did not put mu 1 or mu 2 in this problem because we're talking about the same surface. So we're assuming that the mu, the friction constant, is same throughout the whole ramp. If it was said that it's different, we'll have to use different variables and we would probably need more information about the surface. So now that we have distributed the negative, notice that we have a common term here in mass 1 times acceleration and mass 2 times acceleration. So we can bring both of those over to the other side so that we can factor out acceleration, which is what we are solving for here. So now the left side reads negative 1 half big M A minus M1 A minus M2 A. And let's write the other side down as it is. And here we can factor acceleration out and we're left with negative 1 half big M minus M1 minus M2 equals mu m1g minus 1 half m2g plus root 3 over 2 mu m2g. Now let's isolate a by moving the parentheses onto the other side by division, so mu m1g minus 1 half m2g plus root 3 over 2 mu m2g, all divided by, in parentheses, negative 1 half capital M minus m1 minus m2. And that whole situation is the acceleration. As you can see, no unknowns here, all the variables are givens. Now let's plug in all the values. Acceleration equals 0 0.30892 meters per second squared. Now that we know what acceleration equals, we can solve the other parts by using the equations we solved for earlier, and it's plugging in all our given values and the value of acceleration that we just solved for. So, force attention 1 equals mass 1 times acceleration plus mu times mass 1 times gravity, which, if you plug in all the values, equals 7.681 newtons.
And let's do the same for force of tension 2 by using the second equation, which is 1 half mass 2 times gravity minus root 3 over 2 times mu times mass 2 times gravity minus mass 2 times acceleration, which solves to 9.226 newtons.